Welcome, friends. It's Unlocked. It's IGN's Xbox show coming at you every week. This is episode 345 for May 9th, 2018. Coming up on this week's show, uh, plenty of got a nice little smorgasbord of topics to cover. Walmart Canada, another retailer listing, a lot of uh, unannounced games showing up on that list. We'll try to figure out what's real, what's not. Is any of it real? Is all of it real? Also, a, uh, a title that will make a lot of people at this table happy hits Xbox backwards compatibility this week. <laughs> Microsoft is staffing up for what sounds like a brand new AAA or even quadruple A, as they phrase it. A uh, new project down in Southern California. EA had a fantastic year, financially speaking. Uh, some other EA news with Star Wars Battlefront 2 and the Han Solo movie. Some Battlefield news as well. And Square Enix details their E3 plans. All right. I'm Ryan McCaffrey. To my right, welcoming our editorial games manager for her first unlocked appearance, my Tina first Amini. Appearance. Yes, thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Very happy to be here. Alana Pierce to my left, and uh, we never know which side of the table he's going to end up at. But Brandon Tyrell, yeah, it's it's a toss up. It's however I feel that day. Is this I, is this squeaky leather jacket or is this no, other? This is regular. I haven't he worn. He hasn't worn the. Leather I haven't worn squeaky side. leather jacket. <laughs> we shamed him out of it. No, not because the noise. Because I found out it's got a hole right under the arm. Oh. And uh, when I'm on when I'm on the train, I put my arm up like this, and I was like, well, I can't I can't wear this anymore. Mm, so. Easy solution. Use the other arm. Yeah. What's well, the problem? Good point. This is why she's you have in two arms. <laughs> True. Uh, I have the real germ phobia problem on trains. So if I'm on a train with someone that I know, I will hold on to them. <laughs> I'll just be like, hey, is it okay if I hold on to you? Because just, I just like don't like to take the trains. bullet for me. So if yeah. there's like a really big rocky moment in the train, you pull them down with I you. I basically just hug That's them. That's how I do it. Like even if it's a friend I don't know that well, I'm just like, all right, we're embracing now. It's good. Uh, all right. Easy Steven Seagal on uh, <laughs> Under Siege. Uh, okay. Brandon gets the joke, I think. I actually don't. I was uh, like, I'm I, on my own on this one. Inside, <laughs> I was like a Steven Seagal reference. I should know this, <laughs> but I don't. <laughs> All right. Um, I am seeing a lot of tweets before we get started. A lot of tweets from happy, including you, Alana. Yes. Happy Duke owners of uh, the new Duke controller. They all finally went out, I guess. There was like a customs or some sort of a shipping problem temporarily, and there it was, sounds like it's all uh, resolved now. There was some people who had pre-ordered them at GameStops and then went in and they weren't in stock, but it mm. seems like most of that has all been fixed now. Like mine was shipping delayed, but I ended up getting it two days ago now, so very happy about that. I was worried for a while. Yeah. So is it is it even coming out of the box is the question. I still have it in the box. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to take it out of the box. I was talking to you about this. What I decided I'm going to do, because I have... Effectively, all of the limited edition controllers. Um, I think I'm gonna like create some kind of box glass case display and put them all in there. So I'd, I'd have it like it as an odd installment. You might want to see about swinging a trade with Eric Sapp, one of our graphic designers, because uh, Seamus and Hyperkin were nice enough to send me. I had it on here. Remember the green one? Yeah. There were apparently only like 15 of those made. I gave it to Eric Sapp because he super damn it, he super wanted it. So uh, you can't see the best part if it's all boxed up. Well, I'm saying, but if she, but if she makes this, if she takes them out, make it and an makes the, I would have to take them all out. Yeah. So the, this, the green one didn't have a box. It just came out already. Well, I wish I didn't know that because that's now a, it's slightly now, accessible. Now, that's well, a, now I have to kill Eric Sapp. Great. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. It's been good working with you, Eric. <laughs> that's a good question, though. Do you ruin the value of it by taking it out of the box? To I'm make never going to resell them, so I don't care about that kind of stuff. Like, I know a lot of collectors do, but I'm the same with all my, like, trophies and collector's editions. I'm going to take them out of the box straight away. But I will keep the box. Right on. Don't know why. It's probably I, I don't know why of, either. <laughs> this is San Francisco. We have no space. Yeah. I conveniently have a lot of shelving that I just have boxes inside of boxes inside of boxes. So, so in the, in the event of an earthquake, you will literally be buried and killed by your own... Collectibles. <laughs> when there was an earthquake recently, I did have multiple collectible casualties. Two of my statues broke. It sucked. It's my own fault. You need earthquake insurance. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what. <laughs> that's probably brutal. reimbursed. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get started. There's sort of a there's no like one dominant topic this week, but a lot of just random, smaller but interesting things. And I want to start with the one that broke this morning, <laughs> as we before we recorded here on Wednesday, and that is Walmart Canada. What is it about? There's apparently no cybersecurity in Canada because the that Splinter Cell list was Amazon Canada. <laughs> it's not just Canada though. But Canada's Shadow of War last year got leaked by Amazon. I want to say was it Target? Yeah. Yeah. Canada's uh, so great. Target or Amazon? Target. Amazon stole so my Target. Dark Side is three announcement, and I think that was Amazon oh, US. I, I remember <laughs> this. I'm as still well, very yeah. unhappy about that. <laughs> <laughs> we Basically we all did all right. Retailers everywhere. Yeah. 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 It's, at one it's never happened in brick and mortars ever. 
But uh, yeah, they so they put up. There's a ton of new game listings that showed up, and you start reading it, and you get real excited. <laughs> and then after long enough, I don't know. I, maybe it's just me. I started to go. Wait, a, hold on. So there's Just Cause Four. Like, okay, plausible. That maybe. could be happening. Gears of War Five. Yeah, Seems duh. Uh, the new, new Splinter Cell. Yeah, we've seen that That's before. Likely. That's I want. I want to believe X Files. Uh, dot com. <laughs> Rage 2, that's seemingly a little strange, but just put a pin in that one for a sec. We'll come back to that one specifically. Lego DC Villains. Makes sense, given what Warner Brothers has. Yeah, Borderlands 3 already announced here. If you're watching on video, it's now up on We've seen tech video, yeah. Uh, Dragon Quest 2, and then Forza Horizon 5. That's the one that's not possible. (laughs) Wait a second. Halo 7, 8, and 9 as well. (laughs) Yeah. God of War 2. Yeah, no. What's the Horizon Five is where it's like, wait a minute, that ruins the credibility of all of the others. Yeah, so Unless that's they threw it in there to throw us. Well, off. that's what I want to ask. Like, so it, like the guys, red herring in the yeah, is, is yeah. all of this real? Is all of it is all of it real? And Forza Horizon Five is a typo. Is all of it fake? Uh, I mean, other than the games that have actually already been announced, uh, like Borderlands Three's announced but not announced. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gears, same thing. Gears Five, really, but I think it's all real. And we are we and going just skipping four? I think it's, that's a typo. I would lean yeah. toward typo as well. Yeah. I really like the idea that online retailers are starting to uh, wisen up to the fact that they're spoiling all of the announcements for big publishers and first parties. And so they're starting to put red herrings in there for like games that we know aren't coming and probably won't be ready for years. Death Stranding, get it this fall, you know? Um, <laughs> that's actually a thing they probably should do more of. I don't think that's the case, though. <laughs> no, I don't think it is in this instance, but they should do that. Yeah, I agree. Because then... It, I know it's a huge issue for publishers going into E3 that things get leaked so often beforehand yeah. and they yeah. throw up their announcements and their press conferences I mean, on as triumphant Microsoft as they hoped. Microsoft has yeah. had entire E3s ruined yeah. in, mm-hmm. in recent years. I think last year there was a 4chan leak that we all dismissed that ended up being completely accurate. Like, it's it's awful. So I get, yeah. like, people should be jumping ahead of these. And the one that I really didn't believe, aside from Forza Horizon 5, was Rage 2 because I didn't think that game was that popular. Uh... I haven't heard anyone talk about it in a long time. Since it came out. But then. Yeah, then. <laughs> so. Well, wait a minute. Jesse Pinkman played it on Breaking Bad. Did he really? With a light gun. <laughs> Wasn't that Rage? Oh, that's right. It yeah, might have been. Huh. Yeah, I think that was Rage. There's that scene where, uh, what was his name? Aaron, the actor, whatever. Jesse Pinkman. Aaron Paul. Aaron Paul was playing a Rage on his big screen TV with a light gun. And everyone, like the internet, was lit on fire. Like, wait, there's a light gun version of this game? And they're like, no, guys, it was it was the magic of TV. That goes back. Uh, Doom was on an episode of ER once. The oh. Original Doom. Yeah, they're playing that on there. Top ten favorite video game appearances <laughs> yeah, on, the, be next on the small week's screen. Segment. But yeah, so the the official Rage account. It's at Rage Game. Yeah, here it is. If you're watching on video, they just straight leaned into it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> putting up. Putting up a screen grab and then with some stuff over it that says because it's just a, you know it's a it's a it's just plain black box art with a plain Rage Two te- you know it's it's as placeholder as placeholder gets but the official Rage account says hey Walmart Canada here are a few notes I- incorrect key art circling the Rage Two text wrong font not all caps I love that it I like how they comic get Sans. Sans I love that it yeah. Font. Yeah. yeah and then the first reply love- is. <laughs> Go they're, ahead. they're critiquing it, but <laughs> yeah. they used like MS Paint oh, yeah. Yeah, to like yeah. lock this up. The first reply is from the official Bethesda account at Bethesda saying, dude. And then Pete Hines, the very public facing VP of marketing or whatever Pete's awesome title is these days. Uh, he quote tweeted it saying, this is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> so seemingly all but confirming it uh, that it's legitimate, which makes me wonder if it was totally planned. Uh yeah. If it was all if this is all we're just mm. we're being played right. I would right think that it's cycle. not yeah. Yeah. planned and because Bethesda specifically do such a good job of when not showing you anything until E3 and it's out this year, right? Yeah. This is very anti Bethesda strategy. So my guess is that it wasn't planned, but they probably had a contingency plan for if leaks do happen. They're like, "All right, lean into it, make it a headline." Like Continue adding to the story so it's not just Walmart, so that they tweet our account, so that we get all of this from this app. Yeah, I, I, I have a I have a counter point counter to that, theory. or a counter theory to that, because when I saw this and then saw all the all the Bethesda <laughs> stuff, leading me to think that it's it probably is real. My first thought was, really, Rage Two? Like, who was asking for a sequel to Rage? Yeah, I didn't like. And that, that's not to despair. Like, I reviewed it 
for OXM when I was there. I think I gave it a seven something. It's it, there's there was a lot to like about that game. It's very like it gets to a point where they clearly like went, oh my god, this has been in development forever. Quick, finish it, mm-hmm. and then it just ends. Well, the issue I had with it, which is brutal and very annoying was that uh you know that main hub town yeah i would try to leave and it would tell me that i needed to sign into my account it'd be like you've been signed out of your xbox live account and then i would sign in and it would just say the same thing oh, and well, i had that two separate playthroughs so i had to just give up and stop playing rage so now my reaction to rage is pure rage, rage. rage. <laughs> just like oh i tried so, so See, that's what they wanted it's actually a feature in rage ah. too. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that would meta. think that if they anticipated if th- this is real and they anticipated other people like me going Huh? Rage 2? That's where this, orchestrating like, this, can get all that out of the way. We get it out of our system so that that's not, so that that's not the distraction at E3 yeah, when they the show this problem. I would yeah. think yeah. that, and I, I'm not sure because, again, I think the conversation around Rage died really quickly, but I would think most people aren't like, ugh. I would think most people who played Rage are like, oh, cool. But it would be like the number one joke people would make, to your point. Like during yeah. the conference, if it is announced, people would be like, huh? Yeah. And also, Why? Rage is the, here, I guess. The Fallout Shelter of this year's E3. Hey, Fallout Shelter was incredible. Yeah. Loved it. Loved it. But do you remember that. in that room, everyone's just like, what? It's... No, I was like, oh my God, yes, I'm downloading it immediately. <laughs> Man, you but weren't sitting so anywhere excited. near the tables I, think I was I sitting I literally there. started downloading it in that room. Oh, well, everyone did. Yeah. Cause, it's, right? They were like, oh, and it's. It's available now. Was it's, that? Thing. it's a lot easier to get pumped when it's free and out now than That's when it's true. like, oh, you want six, sixty dollars for Rage Two? Yeah, I wonder a- what. It, I mean, I wonder what it's going to be if it if this all but confirms it. I don't know. I, I do think the whole strategy thing that we're speculating on is way too smart to have <laughs> planned. Yeah. I mean, in general, for anyone, it's just how does anybody come to that conclusion where it's going to be on Walmart's uh, some you know some kind of yeah. product page, and eventually we're going to do this like funny tweet and then have each other tweet at one another. So I, mean, I it is a thing. distract I, from we, that conversation at E3. I think mm-hmm. that the way Walmart. I think that the I think you're right. I think the Walmart thing was probably not planned. I think they got on the phone at six in the morning. And we're like, hey, what are we going to do with this? And the social kid was just like, let's just get weird with it, you know? <laughs> so you and think smart reaction yeah. versus yes. smart pre-planning. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think you smart reaction yeah. as well. And I think one of the things that leans into that is we all think that from the outside, these companies function super well, but none of them really do. Everything's just on fire all the time. <laughs> yeah. Like at every publisher, everything is constantly on fire. And from the outside, we're like, they're incredibly that's intelligent. Also- <laughs> this was a brilliant strategy. That's also true of IGN, Absolutely. by the way. Absolutely. I was just going <laughs> to bring this up. There like, are you guys- people say about yeah. IGN that I'm like, what? Like they're like, how? Uh, who at IGN is picking the 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 teams who are on the podcast? You're like, no, it's just you walk over to your friend. You're like, hey, you free? <laughs> so I come in the room. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if you like, like secrets, they think everything's so orchestrated, and it's just like, hey, what are you doing right now? Because I got a show that I'm doing, I guess. <laughs> but, like, but look at this, right? Like Bethesda is sort of ostensibly the fourth biggest conference at E3, maybe fifth. And we've now they're in the top five. We've now congratulations. We've now just spent fifteen minutes talking. Well, ten minutes about talking rage. about rage two on an Xbox podcast. So, I mean, kudos to them, man. Like yeah. smart use of uh, smart use of social media. That's why the leaning in strategy does work because it does make it a topic of conversation, <clears throat> and you own the news cycle effectively. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. instead of it just being this thing that hangs in the balance. And it's why I've never understood why other publishers don't do that. Don't mm-hmm. like engage so that they can direct the narrative as mm-hmm. opposed to just like letting the rumors fly about and then seeing where it lands on its own. Well, I think you get some companies, you get people with uh, who, the, the decision makers, yeah, who just don't want, they either don't get it or they yeah. don't, they don't want to just, it's traditional. they don't want to let go of yeah. their carefully made plans. Yeah, like, for sure. no, Which no, I'm going to dig I it. I understand we because- printed it and <laughs> found it. Everyone has a copy. Dude, those reveal campaigns cost a lot of money. Yeah, they do. Renting the tent, flying everyone in, food and drinks and whatever. Like that stuff is expensive. So I understand like wanting to stick to those. I love this. This is the Wendy's strategy or whatever. Because they also didn't- <laughs> the Arby's. Yeah, they the didn't Arby's add strategy. any yes. assets, right? All they did was- do no, they totally, no. they totally made an asset. They, they made in an MS asset. Paint in about made three assets. minutes. But it's like no. they don't have any gameplay spoiled. No one knows what the game looks like. It's just like they just chucked it in Microsoft Paint. Well, I think the yellow squiggly lines pointing to the box are evocative of a chaotic nature, mm, really. That is pink. We've seen games announced in so many ways, but kudos now. Credit to Bethesda for, for a fe- pseudo announcing, being the first to uh, uh, more or less announce a game via a quote tweeted retailer leaked listing. Yeah. From Canada. <laughs> From Canada. Fast forward From to E3, Canada. Rage 2 does not exist. Yeah, right. <laughs> it is just the butt of every yeah. joke. Yeah. Um, I don't know Fallout Shelter 2 today. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, One that's the thing. I, hope. My memory of Rage, I mean, it was, in, you know, it was id Software's 
big new IP. Like to, for younger members of audience, it's hard to understate how important and how big a deal Rage was. It was in development for, I want to say, seven years, yeah. if memory serves. It was. it was a long, long time because, you know, they'd done, I mean, obviously Wolfenstein back in the day, but then it had become Doom, Doom, Doom 2, and then the Quake series. And this was going to be the, the big new IP after Quake. Uh, it was going to be this big open world, which at the time was unheard of, especially in a first-person shooter context. And when it finally did come out, the gunplay, that's my, my biggest takeaway from Rage, was the gunplay was amazing. Like, classic yeah. id software. It felt incredible to shoot things. I liked some of the level design as well, and the way that, like, enemies would pop out at you almost in an arcade way, like, from around yeah. corners and ceilings, and got kind of chaotic it, in there. Just kind of a big, empty-ish world outside of those hub towns. The driving the buggy wasn't super great. Basically so, like a combat playground. It was. It did feel fun to play through, to both of your points about the gunplay and how the enemies would react to you. So mm. it's pushed you through. I mean, the question, so... It's like... Sorry, I never played it, but it was yeah. post-apocalyptic. It's Mad Max. It's it really is. But without being like the Mad Max. I thought, yeah, it wasn't I, a totally original setting. I yeah. <laughs> I, I, thought I, I mean, I've seen footage of it, obviously, but I thought I remember being post-apocalyptic. And it just brought me back to the Just Cause 4 announcement, which is, you know, theoretically made by Avalanche, who could be making a Mad Max 2 game, but aren't. And, mm -hmm. and, but, and id, like, I would have either assumed that Doom 2 was, mm -hmm. there, was id software's next project, or, you know, in my heart of hearts, I would love to see a a Quake reboot done in the vein of Quake and what what uh, Machine Games did with Wolfenstein. Like, if we took if we took uh, Quake and rebooted it, a la like use the narrative. Man, I would the, love that. Like a the big universe of Quake big One budget which was, narrative. Yeah, game, like yeah. Whereas, you know, Quake person. Two and Three became well, actually, Quake Two had even a, 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 the Strogos and. So yeah, just like really get serious about Quake. That would be cool, but I would never have pegged id Software's next project to be Rage 2. Uh, it, yeah. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it's not a thing that necessarily we should like dismiss though because you know, the first Assassin's Creed, I was sold on the concept and I bought it, but that game wasn't very good. And then I think Assassin's Creed 2 is like one of my favorite games ever. Yeah, sure. So it, it, there's definitely potential there. It's a, Rage was like a little bit janky and I do think it felt maybe rushed towards So the end, so but. what how did if Rage 2 is real, as, as it appears to be. What what do you think it needs to do to fulfill that potential, to be good, especially in 2018 versus in 2008 or whenever it's Rage was? It's hard to say. Well, it's yeah, always it about, like, like, a good yeah. sequel always takes Italian the foundation voice. of what made any interest in the original game and expands on that, was mm -hmm. the idea, at least, what you would hope for. So if they do take the gunplay and they do take, like, some of those interesting like environmental um, mm. kind of combat situations and create a more interesting story maybe around like a one character that has a little bit more depth or, or something some kind of story that's the thing you that like, I just it's don't, hard to I don't even I totally remember don't remember it. Well. I do remember like narrow pathways and fighting things vaguely but yeah. other than that there's nothing that really sticks there so was that's definitely what they need to do. a story that I like my head is like okay <laughs> it's something to do with like you had, kind of you had to collect They've some kind of DNA the from someone. <laughs> <laughs> like, there was something in there that was like, they they tried, I think. Yeah, get the princess from the tower. The other yeah. thing, too, is, again, like, every game is open world now. So the bar has been raised. Yeah, you have for, to let me climb everything. What, yeah, what Rage 2 can, can bring to the table. We need a good romance story. <laughs> yeah. Batman Arkham character. style combat. Uh -huh. yeah. right. and it's hard to say. Like For me, it would be really good world building because I love Fallout. And in theory, Fallout's just... Open world in a desert. Yeah, maybe you you go through this post apocalyptic world with Rage Junior, who's also right. you know sort right. of yeah. you haven't you've it's kind of an estranged situation. Yeah, yeah. as we know, Rage, Junior. Rage was named you, after the you have, protagonist. You have to <laughs> raise them while dealing with your rage. Right. Mm. Mm. All right, so what do we make of the rest of this? I mean, if uh, uh, I think I think Just Cause Four is right on the money. I think Gears of War Five is right on the money. Splinter Cell, Splinter please, Cell, like, please God. I still don't think it's announced this year. I know we we have some we sort have of an announced bet. bet. It is okay. Is that what we settled on? Which yeah. is very unfair because mine was it's announced at E3 and yours was sometime it's not. after. <laughs> <laughs> I got the uh, I got the good. You really did. Stick. I mean, I think we have a combination here of like historically these leaks that have come from these retailers have been mostly accurate, and then there's also the case of like, yeah, that's going to happen. Like Borderlands Three is going to happen. Yeah, that's event will eventually. I wonder what even if it's not Borderlands an accurate Three would be here. Yeah. It's like eventually right. it will be accurate. It's yeah. just the the gamut is so wide because you have the crackpot theories about how you know we're going to see this game that is now, BC is finally coming out you know um and then you have the ones that are super low-key that don't really get you know lifted to the top of reddit that are a hundred percent right about every single thing so 
this kind of stuff has sort of historically been, you know, taken with a grain of salt, but a lot of times it, it's it's pretty uh, actionable information. Which of these do you think would be on the Xbox stage? Obviously, Gears 5 and... Just Cause. No, you never quite know with the whole third-party marketing who, yeah, who buddies up with guessing. who. I mean, I would hope... Splinter like Cell. You and I were talking the other day, Alana. If, if Splinter Cell is real and it's on anybody but Ubisoft stage... Uh, or really, even if it's, it, I think it's a failure on Microsoft's part if it's not on Microsoft stage. It's been yeah. so associated with Xbox, yeah. and they're in such a predicament in the game exclusive game situation right now. Splinter Cell has to be associated. Mm. It's got to be on Microsoft stage, or else it's just not. It's going to again make Microsoft look bad. I yeah. think. Yeah, I, th I think that they would too. That's an ongoing partnership that I imagine Ubisoft is also yeah. going to support. Rage too. That that will obviously be Bethesda. Yep. Uh, I Bethesda. really hope Forza Horizon Five is on Xbox. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that one. Could be Bethesda as well. You never know. Forza <laughs> or Five. Well, if we're the going twist. all the way to Five, yeah, yeah anything the is twist possible. No at that one point. saw coming. <laughs> uh, I imagine Lego DC Villains is on Microsoft. Um, I don't think that game shows up on anyone's E3 stage. Probably not. I yeah. really hope it doesn't, but it might. Actually, I I don't know. I mean, the the Lego games that are now E3 the, show up on people's stages. That's a hundred percent right. But WB doesn't really have a. A conference to speak of this year, anyway. And uh, I mean, what else are they coming out with this That's year? That's Rocksteady's so? new game, you guys. Lego DC villains. So I mean, uh, you, you joke, but like, I'm if down. this is if this is W, if this is Warner Brothers' <laughs> big ticket item, you got to imagine like they could probably work in a thirty second spot on somebody's stage for it. <clears throat> yeah, Borderlands Three though. Where does that go? Uh, that that's. Highest bidder, I feel like, at that yeah. point. Yeah. I think that's, you got that's Sony better. and Microsoft yeah. clamoring for that one. If it's even on stage. I mean, we've heard, like, nothing. It's not even officially announced. Yeah. It's not officially a thing. <laughs> we know. Except when Randy Pitchford just talks about it. We know it's yeah, got an engine. Yeah, he's been talking about it for three years <laughs> at this point. Yeah. yeah, it's so good. All right, so stay tuned. Just always bookmark these segments. We'll come back to them after E3. Uh, let's move now to the past, and that is Burnout Revenge. Congratulations. How are you feeling? I mean, it's the wrong burnout, but I'm grateful it's still anyway. Still the wrong burnout. <laughs> it's, no, this is, Revenge is fantastic. It's the second best burnout. Um, and I think it's obviously it's easier to, to get this uh, to add it to the backwards compatibility than, than three because three is two generations removed now. Yeah. And I mean, it's, you know, we've seen the, the list of original Xbox backwards compatible games is a smaller list than the 360 list, which is getting quite long mm -hmm. at this point. But the Burnout Revenge did come out for the original Xbox, but then the EA released a 360 version uh, just a couple of months after the 360 release. I think this game came out on 360 in January of 06, if memory serves correctly. And it's real good. It is the, the last uh, closed track Burnout game, because uh, the one after this was Paradise. Mm -hmm. And yeah, no, I'm stoked. I mean, it's this is such a phenomenal racing game. It is so much fun. It has a crash mode, unlike Paradise, and it's great to see. I actually got a very, uh, a, a very <laughs> sincere, sweet note, very f humorous note from someone on the Xbox backward compatibility team that that was uh, sort of saying, "Hey, I thought thought you might like this." Kind of, kind of proud. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was it was really great. So mm -hmm. um, I do hope t Burnout Three is next. Uh, somewhere in the in the queue. Well, they're clearly thinking about burnout. Yes, so. yeah. and they're actually thinking about quite a different, uh, quite a few different things. I mean, in the in the last month, we've had two big drops of like original Xbox games. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but like in the in the week since, we've had a bunch of quiet little releases. Um, it's, most of them are escaping me, but like Saints Row Two and mm -hmm. uh, Burnout Revenge. So it seems like the cadence for releases for these things are starting to pick up, you know? Yeah. Which I, I'm really, really excited about because... Continue to think this program is awesome. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's no doubt that Bill Stilwell and the, the backwards compatible team, like their process, I'm sure, just continues to smooth out and yeah. get better and better. Even from when I went up there in, uh, I think it was early October... So even in the six months since then, oh, that's I'm, right. You did that big news yeah, feature thing. I'm sure that they've they've honed their process even further. But now Revenge is great, and it's if you never played it or you lost it, you can just buy it digitally for ten bucks. And do I think this game as a backwards compatible title is worth ten dollars? Yes, absolutely, it is. It's real good. Mm -hmm. So thank you, backwards compatibility team. Keep them coming. All right, 
Uh, next up this week, this is a story. I, I feel like I'm not seeing the community talk about this a lot. I feel like this is a bigger deal than what's being discussed. I maybe, agree. Maybe it's just me, but Microsoft is hiring for what appears to be a new studio focused on quadruple A games, the, i.e. the the as big as it gets. It's blockbuster. one more A than it's, the other one. Yeah, we're going to be on to five A soon. Does that mean it's just are they making GTA? Well, so that's what I've I've like heard kind of informally used as the quadruple A. It's is, the GTA. It's yeah, it's it's the GTA, but it, it comes down to like score and reception. So if, like a ten out of ten. So right, GTA you're aiming like for that, that like ninety five Metacritic yeah. kind of. Or thing. Or I think like that would be triple A, and then a hundred and just absolute perfection is the quadruple A. So it's that's thing is perfect. Informally, yes, <laughs> as close a ma- as perfect a as it gets. A masterpiece. Yeah, a masterpiece. A masterpiece. Exactly. Um, Interesting. So is that just based off critical reception then? Like colloquially, has we used the phrase? Quadru- yeah, I mean it's. Drupal A. It's not a phrase that I've ever heard used too often, but when I have heard it used, yeah. like online on on internet forums, so you know it's legit. Mm. Uh, is yeah. that it's like a ten out of ten, a hundred out of hundred, A plus, whatever you're saying. Got it. Yeah. I thought it was always like based on money, money, like fi- uh, you know exactly. financials. Uh, that's de- why developer, you know, ability yeah, that's what Triple A is. And so it was weird to me to have, to hmm. have seen it used that way. But I think like know. people are just kind of expanding. Question: Are we going to see a quadruple I game? I hope so. We already have those. Great. That's the Do witness. We? It totally is the witness. That's a, tri- that's a triple I. I, I. Okay, I was making a joke from but the phrase triple I. But it was 10 out of 10, I. so isn't it a quadruple I? Isn't that the point? I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, <laughs> I think Jonathan blows can... just over the bridge. Let's yeah, just ask let's him. let's just talk to triple him. Triple I or triple I? I really, I actually, I don't like like using, like trying to rebrand things as the new. Well, this is another level of quality. I think the games should obviously speak for themselves. Double A um, is sort of a thing as well. It's in baseball. It used to be. I mean, they're all arbitrary. But. <laughs> That's right. Double A means you're getting close to the majors, <laughs> but you still got some work to do. Yeah. All right. So the listing here, this job listing, is for a principal program manager, uh, and here's the here's the interesting part to me in Santa Monica. Yeah. I so I as soon as I saw this, I agreed with your point. The candidate will be tasked with growing internal studio talent and working to help build a new franchise. It also calls for experience shipping high-quality titles at quadruple-A standards. Uh, That is a direct quote. And a knowledge and understanding of the process of building new IP. So Microsoft, unless they've been keeping secrets from us, uh, which they're a company, they do that, but there is not a publicly known studio that Microsoft owns in Southern California. Mm. There are a lot of other ones. There are plenty of, I mean, quite a few. Turn 10's in Seattle, uh, or Kirkland specifically, so is 343. Uh, You've got, who else is owned at this point? Because Playground's not owned, that's just a second party partnership. They're in the UK. Coalition? Uh, Coalition is in Vancouver. Yeah, they're not in the US. So, you know, it's. Creative? No, not creative. That's, uh, those are the big ones. Yeah. So Santa Monica would seemingly be a new studio, uh, and. That means a hundred percent makes sense. I mean, it's definitely who's down there. Studio. You got a lot of studios down in Santa Monica yeah, to potentially draw from. Sony Santa Monica, Sony Santa Monica Naughty Dog, Naughty uh, over there. Right Games is in Irvine, I believe. Yeah, they're is on the Insomniac there too. Yeah, yes. they're in Burbank though, I think. Yeah, which is kind of the opposite side of Los Angeles. Um, who would you say? Insomniac. Oh yeah, Insomniac's down there. Treyarch, Infinity Ward, yeah. Respawn. Yeah, is down there. Respawn, that's right. Yeah, and I mean, a bunch is, of indie studios too. Yeah. Yeah, I guess is LA sort of LA's become a big hub for like Absolutely. it always was for major more developers. Down there than yeah, there are here right now. So uh, yeah, I would say like San Francisco, LA, Austin, maybe San Diego. Yeah, there's more. I think there's like there's more publishers headquartered up Montreal. here, but more developers yeah. down there. It's yeah, seems like. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so I mean, you, you've you'll probably be looking to draw from that whole talent pool. Obviously, uh, there is a lot of talent. Sony Santa Monica just shipped God of War. Speaking of quadruple A's. Um, you know, Treyarch's been working on big budget titles. If you get any anybody that's burned out on making Call of Duty games every three years, you could potentially pull from there. I'm trying to think of like the games from these studios that we've given tens to. <laughs> so like The Last of Us. Yeah. Uh, God of War. God of War. Is that it? I gave what Black Ops. I gave Call of Duty Black Ops one a ten for OXM back in the day. Okay. What did Sunset Overdrive get? Uh, nine uh, it was like something. Nine. But it was, I, it was a Marty did, joint, right? Yeah. 
he underrated it, whatever he gave it, because yeah. that game is super good. That game is so good. Game of the year for me. For I, just, very good I just played it for the first time last year, and I was really? blown away. Yeah, it rolls. It's one of those things where I can sit down and literally have a conversation with someone and not worry about what I'm doing, because I will always be able to grind or catch or bounce or jump on something. Reversal is amazing. The it, movement it, feels so good. It makes every, even the most mundane fetch quests that bore the hell out of me in open world games, it makes all of them interesting. Mm -hmm. One where you have to just blow up as many pigeons as possible yeah. in a short amount of sure. time. It's like, it's so stupid. Why it's not? Great. I like it a lot. But the thing that I want to mention about this is, so yeah, it means first party games, obviously. Um, but the fact that they're starting the studio now means that don't expect whatever new IP they are working on to exist for another four plus years. Ex or At least, the next especially console. Especially if they're staffing up. Yeah. That's going to take a while in yeah. itself. Yeah. This, is an, this is an Xbox One, Two, Four, X two. Xbox Infinite. Next. <laughs> yeah. We're skipping to Xbox Horizon 5. A accor <laughs> according Windows. to Walmart Canada, yes, we <laughs> yeah. are. As one of my Twitter followers pointed out when I made a similar joke earlier today, uh, this is we are dealing with a company in Microsoft who did skip Windows 9. So that's, yes. that's, that's fair. <laughs> Forget nine. Be out of but didn't they have eight point yeah. one? So mm -hmm. that counts. I'm just grasping at straws <laughs> right funny. now, guys. Yeah, whatever this is, we're not going to see it for a while. But it's exciting end. that they're building it's a new IP point. from one of their own studios. Yeah, I mean, I, you're right. I totally agree. It's there's no way this sees the light of day anytime before the the next proper Xbox. But well, who uh, knows? Maybe we'll get a trailer next year. <laughs> If, the yeah. trailer of all the staff they've hired? Well, if, if Microsoft starts taking a page out of Sony's book, which is you have an idea for a game or you've just started principal production on it, like, give us a teaser. give us. A, I mean, Death Stranding made I, an announcement before they had an engine. But I think Death Stranding runs on different rules and that that's Kojima's What's coming off rules, Kojima's, yeah. Yeah. not Sony's yeah. rules. Yeah. I think they're just like, do whatever you want, dude. Actually, they oh, announced they, their, their studio, I guess, um, before the game. So like that was the main hype was around that. So yeah. it's true. Microsoft well, it was also like Kojima coming Shenmue off of Konami. Shenmue was kind yeah. of the yeah. weird yeah. Fiasco. Yeah. They didn't have any game done, really. They had a Kickstarter. Yeah. So we'll see. I mean, Strange. if they're looking to sort of court the quadruple A gamers who look for these like massive million and million dollar investments in these games to be like absolutely stunning, and maybe they, they do take a page out of the Sony marketing book for that, which would be interesting because I would love to see a game that I am legitimately like, I have to buy that. No matter what it turns out to be, I have to buy that. I would love to see that on Microsoft stage. What, what I want to know, what I'm curious to hear your guys' opinion on here is, what is a quadruple A game to Microsoft? Because to Sony, That's a good we point. know what that is. It's The Last of Us. It's God of War. Horizon we just saw even. it. Super Horizon polished sure. third-person I mean, action I adventure. I just finished God of War uh, la yesterday, actually. I was, oh, I was out nice. sick yesterday. I got to at least <laughs> make some productive use out of it. What did you think of that ending? Uh, awesome. <laughs> no, I, uh, Welcome but, beyond. But I, <laughs> and I don't, this is going to get taken in the absolute worst way by commenters, but whatever, they already hate me anyway. Uh, God of War is just a game that Microsoft has not even attempted to make. That, so, something like that. They've just not made anything. Counterpoint. Like, Quantum Break. But but Quantum Break, yeah, it's single player only. Mm -hmm. I think that's about the only thing. Cinematic, highly polished. But it was never Got going, Iceman from it was the never going to be that 10 out of 10. But I would also see that as being more of a remedy idea than a Microsoft idea that Microsoft was just like, yes, we'll take it. I wouldn't think it's it was something the that they bought rather than something they crafted. But I think so. And so I developer. say that not yeah. to not to that's a fair rip point. on Microsoft, but I say that because I am curious what quadruple a means to them yeah. with this new studio does that mean like do they can is halo a quadruple a i believe to them i would think so i believe yeah. so yeah i would think gears falls into that t as well those have not gears four and halo five were not 10 out of 10 games they're very good games so you know i'm curious if this studio will like will it be a Really super <laughs> hardcore single player. Well, that's narrative the one thing I wish game. this had have said. That the one thing I wish that I could see is single player. But I mean, I imagine the way games are going. You know, we've seen God of War sales. The same thing happened with Horizon. They are repeatedly breaking sales records yep. for Sony, and mm -hmm. that's showing Deservedly everyone else. So. Right, and that's showing everyone else that they can do that with. God of War's new IP, but yeah. basically with this a very very strong single player game. I would guess that with Microsoft with their strategies would be they do something more similar to GTA and that we would get 
a strong single player experience now that we know that we can, but that they would figure out a way to make it a service also so that you keep going back to it, which I'm fine with. Like I'm, I'm totally cool with GTA five and GTA online. Mm. And that's what I imagine Microsoft would want to do because I, I think that's super important to them. I think they are trending toward more, the more social experience you can see in Sea of Thieves. and a Well, lot Phil of, has said that publicly, yeah. that that's <clears> very important. I mean, important and to be fair, that is very smart. Games, as, the, games yeah. as services are where the money is at. Right. Also, their infrastructure is so good for it. You know, like mm-hmm. Xbox yes. Live is a, a very, very good service. And to not utilize that, I think, is a little bit silly. But yeah, we still I, obviously want those narrative experiences. That's what I want. It doesn't have to be time. every game. Just a few, a few, yeah. a few quadruple so, A's would be great. So that's a great point, because when I think back to the quad A game, Games that uh, that Microsoft's done in the past, Gears of War and Halo are both shooters, right? Where Sony leans very heavily into the third-person action adventure genre. Yeah. So I'm curious if they go, well, we need the next big blockbuster shooter, or if they go, like, mm-hmm. what what do they do? Like, wh- where do they go after that? Right? Yeah. Do they steal that page out of Sony and say, like, we need a third-person action adventure game because that reminds me a lot of what Scalebound looked like it was going to try to be. Um, that was more JRPG ish well, to well, me, but well, <laughs> it was it was third person action adventure, and you had a buddy that came around with you, and then you right. sure it was I a mean, massive it was a platinum game. It, it was, was a massive dragon, game. but yeah, yeah. So I'm curious. I, I don't know what that means to them. Halo from a genre yeah. standpoint. Halo will continue into the next generation of Xbox. Gears will continue into the next generation. Forza will continue. But boy, if if Playgrounds Fable reboot could be that. Big, you know, quadruple A single player. If you actually I mean, care about the dog uh, this time. <laughs> if uh, this new studio, new IP could be a quadruple single, just to f- round out the portfolio a little bit, mm-hmm. that would be great. That yeah. would be awesome. Variety. Yeah, I feel like my ideal something like more more focused on the story that they're trying to tell because I think that's what's capturing a lot of people's attention these days. It's either GTA Online gives us so much content, and like week after week, people are spending so many hours in that game because it's there's so much to do. That's sandbox, one thing, yeah. but it's also centered around something that you can latch on to. So like GTA, there's this long history for it. So if it is something new, I'd love to see them more focused on less of like owning a certain genre and, mm-hmm. and more like owning like the next face of Xbox, like like Master Chief was. Great, nice yeah. yeah, Yeah, I think we can all agree like whatever it ends up being as long as it's amazing. Like that's what they need. Yeah. And I, it seems like a dumb thing to say, but like as long as this is clearly the next major victory for Microsoft, like that's what they need. That's what they need more than anything because Just like one narrative driven single player game a year. That'd be great. If we had yeah. one from each of them, right? Then there's one from PlayStation and one from Nintendo and then the rest of third parties because that's what majority of people buy anyway. For all yeah. of the time that we spend talking about exclusives, the highest selling games are always third parties. So it's like just just one big exclusive from each of them that's like a slightly different flavor because they're making very different things and then the rest are just delicious third parties and then everyone wins. Yeah, I mean... Seems great. Great recipe. We, Thank you. We <laughs> talk about this all the time, but f- exclusives really only are incentive to buy their hardware. Absolutely. So like... I would love it if there's only one major, if we get Halo and then we get whatever, The Last of Us or whatever on Sony Mm -hmm. a year, and then the rest of us, everybody can play all the other games. Like that's an ideal world, right? Yeah, cool with it. All right, we'll see what they come up with in the coming years. No, (laughs) in fact, Uh, people online right now are just like, no, they all have to be on Microsoft. (laughs) Uh, EA, we've talked about on the podcast how they seemingly had a kind of a terrible year from a PR perspective between the visceral thing and the loot box PR problem that they had, uh, and and one thing and the next. But turns out they uh, those those uh, seeming PR issues did not hurt the bottom line in any way whatsoever. EA reported its fiscal year revenue at over five billion dollars, a record breaking year for EA. That figure represents an increase of about three hundred and five million over their previous year fiscal year numbers. EA credits credits its financial success to expanding reach of its leading franchises, including FIFA, Battlefield, and The Sims, which, you know, don't laugh, The Sims is still a gargantuan franchise. Uh, So The Sims is very fun. It is. It's it's been good for a long time. I I played the original back in the day. I had fun uh, just, you know, it's fun to troll your your Sim. Well, I just like building stuff in the same way that it's, I like Sims for the same reason I like Minecraft. It's yeah. like using them as drones to gather resources and then building something cool. Yeah. 
So and yeah, <laughs> and you're then killing pretty everyone. messed up. Yeah, and then <laughs> they're completely expendable, and I'm done. Yeah, and then you they go they go for a swim in the pool, and you remove the ladder from the pool, yeah, and they can't great. get out. It's oh great. my god! It's and a, then watch. I worked. You on can't a, do that anymore. I worked or, on a couple Sims games at EA HQ, and that was literally half the day. Is just, right. What can you do to these Sims you, <laughs> that you haven't seen yeah. before? I mean, those they, are the best stories. It got, yeah, they, you, it's they, dark. They, they go into the, to the bathroom, and you would take the door off the the bathroom, and welcome to hell. They would eventually struggle and then pee themselves and die, and cry, and then die. That yeah. was it. Oh, so, kill beautiful. their family, remove all the doorknobs. They're like yeah. pinhead. <laughs> Welcome to my reality. We're going to play a game. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, speaking of EA, Battlefield. may uh, They may be following, if, if the rumors of Battlefield V or 5 or whatever are correct, Battlefield may be following Call of Duty back into World War II, but apparently they are not following them into the uh, doctor's office to have their single player campaign removed. That's done. Brandon knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> what? Uh, as part of yesterday's earnings report, <laughs> EA CEO Andrew Wilson described the upcoming game saying, quote, with our next Battlefield game, the team at DICE is bringing the intensity of combat to life in new and unexpected ways. Every battle is unique and every mode brings its own challenges from the way you interact with the environment around you to compelling single player stories. Boom, the stories. Next level of stories. Stories. Like vignettes, like Battlefield One, which was great. I which enjoyed was that awesome. a lot. Like an anthology. Yeah, yeah. Sounds because like- I get it. I, I, I love a good single player story. But when you're when you're uh, a series that jumps between like different locations in it, sp- <clears throat> <laughs> I almost said Pacific. I meant specific. So when you jump between locations in a specific theater, you have to like figure out. Well, how can we get this guy to be in a tank and then on a boat and then riding horseback and then undercover behind enemy lines. I like the vignettes much better. Give me like three cool small stories. It also means that this is the way to go. They don't have any filler in the story. Like everything is tense all the time. And yeah, that's one of the things I like the most about the way that Battlefield One did it and really compelled me to. Dude, that tank, that tank vignette from that oh, was, was messed super up. Super tense. Yeah, I really like. Probably that. my favorite one. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Narratively, it made so much sense too, just for the context of the war. Like there are so many different people and yeah. from different angles with yeah. different stories and different backgrounds, and it just really, really fit. And it mm-hmm. felt like it respected what you know the situation was at the time. Yeah, it I think sounds- it's it's so like this sounds cool. It's just so interesting to me that previous story that. Everyone's talking about the death of EA and like how much they oh, yeah. struggle, and we just forget Dude, how contained is- we are. You know, like we really we forget that things that seem like a huge deal to us, yeah. most people who play games don't notice or care. They don't care at all. They have they're just like cool. But it's a Star Wars game. Clearly, loot boxes not that big of a deal. Yeah, I know. And we're like everything's burning to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> we spent a hundred dollars on those loot boxes to find out what you get. Totally oh, not. The whole loot box situation, though, did create more ripples than usual. Like, it wasn't the yeah. typical, yeah. like, commenters out crying and then just being lost in a void or, you know, maybe get some kind of, like, cursory comment re- replying to it. But it it had some tangible changes, like, for Battlefront 2, which I'm sure we'll talk about in a second. I mean, yeah, it changed their attitude, which well, is, is a big deal. And you had... S- certain other countries' governments actually yeah. regulating it. Sure. Was it yeah, Belgium, in I Europe, think? Yeah, in the yeah. Netherlands, they they like outright said, like, yeah, no, this is gambling. We're defining yeah. it as such, legally speaking. So, yeah, there's been, like, an actual reaction to that kind of stuff, more than so we've shocking. seen before. Because why now? You know? See, games can affect change. Because it has the <laughs> Star Wars logo on Just not quite the way you were Yeah, there was also this, like, giant petition where people were messaging towards oh parents, and it was, like, Disney with Star Wars. So Dude, it was all these yeah. big names that people can recognize. True. Not, That's like, true. EA and, and, you know, this game called Battlefront 2. So yeah. the messaging was, like, really on point. I get another so tip about thing. a change.org petition. I'm just going to read it. <laughs> Please help. Well, this one was like this shareable imager uh, thing that people put on Facebook, and like that's the prime area to yeah. do that kind of stuff. Like, especially no one's going on change. Exactly, no one's yeah. going on change. Org, but there are tons of moms on Facebook. They're like, oh, "What is this? My children are at risk." So, They're gambling yeah. again. Johnny, we all no. know like how how information spreads on Facebook. People yeah. just pressing share without barely even looking at it. Yeah, thing, it's so. a problem. Yeah, totally. Like I was saying Big before, news. we spent a hundred bucks. It's totally not worth it. It didn't break the game though. Right. So it was like sort of this echo chamber of not a bad way either, but like people were hearing, you know, as far as I can tell, we were the first ones to write the story about Battlefront 2 being pay to win. I think that it was our headline before anyone else's. It was Tom Marks who wrote the story, right. actually, um, which I, I have to give him a shout out for. And that like, of course, yeah, before this is, the review before. Yeah, this is the first thing that was written about it, I believe, was from IGN. And mm-hmm. as far as I can tell, which I think is really cool. And it's it, he wasn't unfair, though, either mm-hmm. in a way that, you know, we brought light to the issue. But then they did. They did change it. They totally did change it after the beta. And I get why that was all inflated. But 
Yeah, the way that that so, went down was super messy, but yeah, yeah, it was there it was, there was really some strange that were made. Yeah. Um, yeah, and people were hurt because there was a legitimate problem, and I think that also backed a lot of like why that that rippled as as far as it did. Yeah. So like, another I, thing is that they're, they're now five years, I think, this week into the Star Wars deal with EA. Oh, is it? I, I believe yeah. it's five years. Wow. This week. Halfway already. Halfway, Jeez. and there's only two games. Yeah, two That's battlefronts. Insane. Well, two Star Wars games on consoles. Yeah, I mean, the older public had already existed. Well, point no, 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 being, no, no. they, they since, got the since license. Since the beginning of the deal. Since the deal started, right, and EA has only made two Star Wars games two on battle consoles. Two Battlefronts, right? Yes. Yeah, that's... Which is crazy. They should have made so many more than that. Well, I'm sure... Did they do any mobile stuff or anything like they that? They have done mobile stuff. Okay. Yeah. I mean, because we know... It's a huge, which generates a lot right, of money. Right, <laughs> Yeah, clearly. But it's Although like, you know, notably, they had two like other games that... Battlefront 2 is we don't know where they are. list. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if, I mean... Why don't why haven't we had at least an attempt at a uh, a Star Wars game in the Skyrim, you know, Elder Scrolls open world. Just an open world RPG. Why is that exi- you know, a single player RPG because they have the older public for online stuff. Game to search. Where's the, I mean, what the, was, the what was Amy Hennig's game got yeah, canceled. That, that's what I think that might have been. And well, they're, re- like part of the they're retooling it now, right? Allegedly, I can't even remember. Like, I've read, I've read this story so many times, and I can't remember the details of Can it now. Imagine being Disney and being like, "We gave you this license for ten years, and you've only made two. We gave you Star Wars. How did you mess it up? Well, well. <laughs> I can because they know that Respawn's working on something, and they know that they're retooling whatever the one, um, whatever Amy Hennig's I, name I was will, going to be. I, you will never convince me until it ships that any form of the Hennig game is going to release. Just after. I, I don't. Yeah. Call it, me might, it might just like, be just assets, dude. Coming. It might just it might just come down to like they're going to use character art and they're going to use environmental art, and maybe level art, but maybe. that could be it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, people were definitely working on something there for a long time. Like, I don't know what happened to it, but still, I just feel like, you know, being halfway through this, I wonder if Disney's like, please let this next five years be over so everyone can make more Star Wars games. It's just so much revenue. I don't that they know. I mean, get. I, I, I mean, think they do want. They don't want them just wrapped out they do want good quality of games course. with their ip on them smash cut to the yearly star wars movie <laughs> <laughs> well how, twice that are a year. that are still making twice billions of dollars yeah. is it twice now well i guess it's not no we, not sc- count, we skipped not one yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah twice yeah. within the last six months yeah but just not they just happen to be a calendar year I mean, went, change went rogue one then last jedi right well i'm just talking about well, solo, solo being this one yeah uh, now last it's, jedi yeah, well, I guess that just further speaks to the point <laughs> on Solo, whatever uh, December is going to be. Uh, all right. Finally. It's very irrelevant to our next Yeah, on the topic of Battlefront 2, they are getting a Han Solo-themed content season, uh, which is not at all surprising. It's <laughs> making use of the Star Wars license. The Han Solo season starts May 16th, that's next week, and will be spread across two months the new Jabba's, uh, Jabba's Palace multiplayer map will be introduced, located in the Dune Sea on Tatooine. It'll be available in Blast, Hero Showdown, and Heroes vs. Villain modes. I wonder if they're going to use the new art or the uh, new character designs for Young Solo, Young Lando. Yeah, that's a good question. Donald mm-hmm. Glover and Hell yeah, Donald Glover. Whatever his name is. Yeah, that other one. Yeah, <laughs> that's the young main Han. character whose name we keep forgetting. <laughs> <laughs> I felt so bad. I like I don't know his like name. Donald Glover though. <laughs> yeah, but that Donald Glover. <laughs> and young, younger Chewie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Probably, I would imagine they'll have both. Actually, I could see them doing both. Uh, it's good to see this. I mean, yeah, but you know, Battlefront Two is is a good game after they hashed out all the microtransaction stuff. So yeah, it's a great game. Yeah, good to see the support continue. Yeah, I think the major complaint has been a lack of content, and I think we're like six or seven months into the game having been released, and that, that's like been the complaint that I've read the most. Mm. Even actually through this announcement, I was looking at some reactions, and people were saying that it, it wasn't enough, and they didn't want to wait until June because it's spread out over two months, but we only know the content for May and mm. not what's happening in June, and allegedly June is when we get a new mode for the game. Mm. So that's the stuff people really want to know about, yeah. and I think people are frustrated. That, Gameplay stuff rather than Yeah, this. exactly, yeah. Aesthetics. Didn't they do that with the first one as well? In that you people bought the season pass without even knowing what was going to be in oh, it, yeah. that content for a Wait, really long time. Was that Battlefront? But yeah, you're well, right. You're right. They offered a season games, pass without yeah. revealing what was in there. And yeah, it's like that's not great. And they just took such a long time to get that content. Yeah, out, but which is so crazy. I haven't played two since launch, but like I feel like there's been a million expansion packs. Like the gre- yeah, the, the Greedo DLC. pack and the yeah other guy pack. Yeah, they've been- <laughs> They've been supporting it. You know, yeah. all the aliens. Also, shout out to Mitchie D. Go to Mitchie D. Oh, that's Mitchie D. That's right. 
Uh, finally this week, Square Enix will be doing, they are going to be at E3. They're not doing a traditional press conference. Instead, it will be a Nintendo Direct style stream. It'll be called the Square Enix E3 Showcase 2018, a pre recorded stream starting at 10 a.m. Pacific on uh, June 11th. That's Monday, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's where, that's in the spot basically that that's, Microsoft used to have. That's yeah. Monday morning, yes. Yeah, that's yeah, before a, they moved the first there. showcase on Monday, which is curious because Square usually works really closely with Sony on a lot of stuff. So I'm curious if they're going to be announcing anything because Sony hasn't revealed when their conference is yet. Oh, well, I guess we're all assuming it's the 6 p.m. Yeah. Well, I think usual Monday, the last, you know, they're always the last one. Yeah. Based on the event that I went to, um, for Tomb Raider, everything was on Xbox One. Um, oh, cool. It was all Xbox branded, so they definitely still have that partnership. Sure. So yeah. that one, <clears throat> I expect that to be Tomb Raider there. We'll probably see Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh, I can imagine they'd want You think so? Show. Like, I mean, it's see, been. <laughs> this is the thing, too, because. Yeah, all right, I think so. Tomb Raider's content, if Microsoft opts to have it on their stage, that will be on Sunday. Probably happen. Make total sense for them to be on Monday then, because they can just do a, more. An, an expanded version yeah. of that. But Kingdom Hearts 3 debuting on Square Enix stage before Sony's conference, I don't think is something that happens. Really? I mean, but, but what better reason to get people to tune in to your pre-recorded streamed conference than to be like, hey, we've got Kingdom Hearts 3. Yeah. Or so maybe, otherwise, who watches? Or maybe, yeah, that's true. Maybe they do something where they, it's like a partnership. I just... You could I, do... Both. I can't imagine, yeah, Sony has something... Or Sony would be like, oh, no, go ahead, take take it, you know? Oh, I mean, Kingdom Hearts 3 is cross-platform, though, right? It's going to be on Xbox One as yeah. well. So it's Wait, is it? I thought it was PS4 only. I don't think so. I don't so. think so. I think it's cross-platform. Well, I, I could be wrong. But also, we've seen cases where a third-party publisher will have, they'll have two E3 trailers right. and give one to the first party. And then yeah. It'll be like a trailer, yeah. hands-on gameplay. Yeah. On now TV, it's time yeah. to look behind the scenes kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, what else do they have? But like Square's Final Fantasy VII remake, they have Final Fantasy XV. Well, Final Fantasy VII crazy, remake. Let me, crazy mashups. Let me back up a second. Uh, and all that stuff is tied. Isn't with Just Cause a Square? Yeah, that's franchise. Square. So yeah. if if the probably Amazon Canada or the Walmart Canada thing, we could see is more legit. from fourteen. I would imagine that would happen. Realm Reborn. Yeah. Um, Announce it for Xbox. Yeah, more from fifteen. I don't think we see the Final Fantasy VII remake. <laughs> Uh, about Final Fantasy 16. Let's just let's just go there. Probably not. No, too I early. Love, probably. I love right. this joke. We're just gonna skip <laughs> right over. <laughs> let's just go 17. Screw it. Yeah. What, what else would my lucky what else would Square show? Uh, 17. I mean, we don't know if it's 30 minutes. Um, we don't know if it's an Deus hour. Deus Ex probably not. Uh, probably not know, ready. They, they said that. I mean, they publicly acknowledged like they're kind of hanging that one up for a little while because uh, they remember they got the the Mar- the Avengers game. Oh, that's right. Yes, there. the Avengers game. Well, we haven't seen anything about that yet. So that's true. Um, their life a... is strange as well, I believe. Square. So is, uh, or maybe a season uh, three. Yeah. A yeah. cursory Google search says seven remake is just PlayStation Four. I thought you were it... asking about Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. No. Yeah. We know about I... seven. <laughs> no, guys. That's fine. I know. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna stop. Earth to Brandon. <laughs> I haven't been sleeping well lately. I uh, I I have no. I apologize. <laughs> Accepted. Yeah. I can't be held responsible for the dumb things that come out of my mouth today. Who wrote in Noctis drives a Chevy Silverado? I did. I did. Notes. I did. Because I'm trying to think of what, <laughs> yeah, what else Kingdom Hearts 3 is Square Enix Xbox can Plus. show. Okay, thank you. Is it, what, was it the Cadillac concept car? That that's It was something, and then it was Cup of Noodles, and then it was Assassin's Creed, and then it was... <laughs> there was something else, too. It did something else, yeah. yeah. Wasn't there like a quota of amount of cars that have to show up at E3? Live cars. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Xbox right built it last definitely year. Definitely one on Xbox. Yeah. <laughs> Xbox has got you covered every year. Yeah. Hey guys, what's up? <laughs> Porsche. <laughs> yeah. Every year I try to guess what kind of car it'll be, and every year I've been wrong. Yeah. Every year. I mean, Porsche it, one. I should. You guessed. can usually kind of narrow it down though, too, because it's usually one of the supercars. It's going to be a right? supercar. Whatever's on the cover of a Forza game, <laughs> generally. <laughs> yeah. All right. So stay tuned for Square's uh, E3 presentation, and that'll wrap it up news-wise. Of course, I didn't bring in the you sheet. You forgot for, the attached sheet again, It's literally Ryan? on my desk. You want to go I'll go get it. Yeah, just uh, maybe talk about games with gold. Yeah, we can do marketplace. So, make games with gold. We have Super Mega Baseball 2, May 1 to 31 on Xbox One. Uh, Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain, May 16 to June 15 on Xbox One. Sega Vintage Collection, Streets of Rage, May 1 to 15, Xbox One, Xbox 360. And Vanquish, May 16 to 31, Xbox One and Xbox 360. It's a date today. All right, we still got plenty of time left on yep, these. It's ninth. Um, I haven't played Super Mega Baseball. Man, Did you say you tried it? Super Mega Baseball 2 is quite fun. Yeah, yeah. I, I tried it. 
Uh, if anyone follows me on Twitter, you saw uh, last week I posted a short video clip where it's just this cool, cartoony, unassuming baseball game, and I hit a line drive and kill a pitcher. And it was the most jarring. Oh, like, boy. The, Ryan, you remember this video? Is this jarring like thud when the did ball? Did you put it on Twitter? Like I, you said, you were I going did. To yeah. yeah, and then I put in like a man died. Im- a woman died. It's woman co-ed died. baseball. <laughs> yeah, I put in like that Imogen Heap. Ooh, what you say? Oh. Music over the top that's of it. That's why that song got stuck in all of our heads. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, that game is a lot of fun, and it's actually just a cool, like relaxing baseball. Yeah, game. I mean, it's no MLB the show. No, we no, still no, no, don't no. have that, but it is super fun. I mean, it is to me. Yeah. It reminded me. It reminded me of. Uh, old school NES RBI baseball. Yeah, yeah, and that brings up happy memories. So I, was that the, was thing. that the one where you could change your power ups when you were swinging and like put the rocket symbol on and you could hit line drives like through the walls and stuff? Uh, like blub at the baseball. Uh, I don't think so. There was there was one that was like an arcadey power. I mean, RBI up was it's sort of arcadey in hindsight, but it was it was the attempt at being a sim baseball game. Okay, okay. Can we just have NES. a baseball segment on the show? <laughs> hey, I'm in. You know, I'm in for that. Just a five-minute segment every week where Ryan's just like, let me tell you about baseball, children. You, you, you just spin your chair this around. Day. No, I just leave. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, this right. day in 1951. <laughs> uh, games out this week. We have AO International Tennis, Australian Open. I've been there. Very fun. I believe the, the, you, the, our AU team reviewed it and said it was pretty bad, if I'm thinking of the... Well, dang. The game. That's a the real game. shame. Not the actual Not the location. Event. I got it. The event's great. Uh, Conan Exiles... <laughs> Which is Xbox One X enhanced. Yeah, um, wait, I like, wait, wait. <laughs> Never mind. Keep going. I like Conan Exiles a whole lot. I know where you're. Yep. Stop. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you stop. Yep. It's an open world survival game. Uh, Death Road to Canada sounds cool. You take a trip up north, the Death Road to Canada, a randomly generated road trip simulator that puts you in control of managing a car full of colorful characters. Yeah, it actually, actually sounds, sounds really cool. Fun. It actually, yeah. I, I played it on Steam uh, uh, last year or something, but it's actually really fun. It's Kind of got an Oregon Trail vibe to it. Mm. So nice. Then you get out and like try to scavenge around small towns and fend off zombies. I don't like Oregon Trail at all. What? I know. Is that because well, you just hold don't on. like Oregon? Or? Controversial Stop opinion. You don't, like trails? It, you don't like Oregon Trail? No. Well, I assume you didn't play it in school. No. Growing up. Was that yeah, an Australian that thing? That might be, yeah. Because like everybody in our age yeah. group sort of like played Oregon Trail. I played it for the first time it's a, a few months ago. Sure. And number munchers. And found it very boring. Uh, Sim City, I got to play a little yeah. of that in the computer lab. See, that was what I, I that too. that's what I played when we they weren't looking when we were supposed to be doing yeah. that stuff. But I like, didn't know, even know what Oregon was until two years ago. Well, so, why would yeah. you? Be fair, yeah. I, I couldn't name any. I don't even know if Australia has states or provinces or several. Anything. Yeah, yeah, Sydney. Got a few of those. Well, I know they have cities. <laughs> joke, guys. It's a joke. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not that. I'm dumb. Uh, not that dumb. The Western one of them has got like a cardinal direction in the name, right? We have Western Australia, uh, Northern Territory, and South Australia. So, yes. Okay. They're all just very, they make sense. They, they, they're they clearly labeled. It's like well, regional. only those three, actually. The rest <laughs> are all garbage. But uh, We have North Dakota, and <laughs> there's another one, but I There's something else that's yeah. north, right? I don't know. There's too many states here. No. Um, Destiny 2 Warmind. I know a lot of people in the office are playing that and seem to be enjoying it. Uh, that's Xbox One X enhanced as well. Raging Justice. This is the city is in chaos. It sounds very chaotic. It's too stressful. Um, <laughs> Shantae, Half Genie Hero. Didn't we already talk about that one? Uh, Maybe at length on a previous episode. Um, because this game's just been around for such a long time, yes. so it has all of the previously released DLC modes as well. Explosion, inspired by both modern and old school shooters, Explosion is an arcade twin stick shooter that describes itself as simple to learn yet hard to master. I wonder if that's anything like Splatoon. If uh, if it does say if it doesn't have like a Cuphead esque art style, then then it's poorly named. Yeah, am I right? Explosion. Yeah. yeah. Or just <laughs> several octop- octopi. Octop- octopi. Yeah. Sure. Let's. Nailed I it. actually <laughs> think the plural of octopus is the es. I don't octopuses. I think it is. More googling. Required. What's the plural of octopus? Here we go. Okay, hold on. It, also, also, I know, she won't say also you're playing a super dangerous game right now, Ryan. I just want to. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a lot that could go wrong here. Yeah, Parkhurst, were you going to try? I, I usually say octopi and float. Yeah. But it, it, I, I think it actually is octopuses. Yeah. It's always the one that you don't think it is. It is. He's yeah. right. Octopuses? Yeah. yeah. There you go. Oh, there we go. On with the show. <laughs> anyway, Rocket Wars is out May 9. <laughs> Fast place, local player, multiplayer game. Uh, Subaria, May 9. This is an action packed roguelike. Trailblazers, 
which I have heard of, you get ready for high speed thrills with an explosion of it's, color. In yeah, it's kind of it's a little F zero ish. It yeah. looks pretty good. It's a, like yeah. a co op arcade racing game. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you zombie paint, pinball. You paint the track like that's the Splatoon type angle. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Is it like Tron? You can't cross the streams or like well, you, 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 you try to cover over theirs to get more. Oh, doors. I see. Yeah. So it's just got it. Yeah. Uh, zombie pinball. That's. Exactly what it sounds like. Is it like. very slow paced or is it fast zombies? <laughs> fast pinball. Yeah, are we talking twenty eight days later or what? Oh it does God, not it does not say. That's so stupid. It does not but specify. It's funny. Uh Laser League, May tenth, face off in packed and vibrant international stadiums with intensely challenging laser maps to master. You can stop now. It's fine. Laser League. What? This, this is a lot. There's a Cross lot of these. Fire. Uh Hyper Sentinel. X one yeah. Xbox One X enhanced. Face melting, pixel pumping, arcade shoot 'em up. Uh, Grim Legends 3 is a hidden object puzzle adventure game. That's, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> a lot of games this that's week. That's what it says. A lot of games. There's a lot of hyphens on the yeah. that is. digital side. All right. Uh, yeah. Let's go to Unlock Block Trivia. So Tina's first opportunity Boy. to get on the oh. board here, answer hey. some Xbox trivia. Yeah. I thought this was a good one. Um, Malcolm Irons from Texas writes in and asks, what was the first Metal Gear game on any Xbox console? I knew this one. I, I think no, I I'm not a Metal Gear I guy. I, I do might. remember this, but let's test your knowledge. So was it Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty? Metal Gear Solid, uh, pardon me, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance? Metal Gear Solid 2, Subsistence? Or Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater? I'm going to go Tina's way first. She's our uh, first cool. time guest here. Um, well, I know all of them are collected in the like HD collection, I believe it was. So this is kind of tough. So trick question. Yeah. Wrote out. All of them. <laughs> yeah. D or E, rather. All of the above. They all came out at the same time. I, I do remember, I'm going to kind of guesswork it. Because okay. uh, I have one piece of like random trivia, I guess, to, to go alongside this. So I'm going to guess B, Metal Gear Solid Revengeance. Okay. Because I remember specifically that they didn't release it on Xbox uh, uh, in Japan. And it had to do something with like the really awful sales of the, right. the, the entire. I mean, it's yeah, it's that. a lot of a lot of games don't see yeah. an Xbox release in Japan for that reason. So. Yeah. All right. So, so a random guess. Going revengeance here. Uh, <laughs> do either of you know it for sure? I have but an inkling. I'm actually. I thought I was like 95 percent sure, and then listening to your answer, I'm like, now I'm second guessing myself. I'm gonna go Alana's way next then. <laughs> I don't think it's Revengeance. I think it was something before Revengeance. I thought so as well. Um, but I don't think it was Sons of Liberty. I, I'm going to go with Metal Gear Solid 2 Subsistence. Okay. Brandon? I'm going to go Sons of Liberty. Okay. That was the two that I was tossing you off. You have to go I don't Snake which Eater one now. it was. Well, There's I don't no play because already I already know the answer. answer. Yeah. I, <laughs> I played Sons of Liberty. I, it was the only Metal Gear game I played until. See, I played four. it, but I think that I played it on PlayStation. That's why I'm thinking. See, I think I played, I it, played on it on Xbox, PlayStation for which Damn is it, why. No. Oh. What, what, hard, guys. So, all right. Fix uh, our memory. The good news one of you is correct. Well, well, I would hope so. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't D then. It wasn't it's Snake correct. Eater. It's not Snake Eater. But no, this is a big deal. The, the first time a Metal Gear game finally came to Xbox, it was the original Xbox, and it was Metal Gear Solid 2 Subsistence. Oh. Yeah. Yes. yeah. I thought it was Substance. Metal Gear Solid. It's sub Subsistence. It's subsistence. But I, I, in my head, and I, I'm totally not sure if this is right, I think that Sons of Liberty came out on PlayStation first, and then Correct. they brought Subsistence to Xbox as like a different... Correct. Okay. Yes. Oh, so subsistence was Sons of Liberty for Xbox. But kind with, of. I think it had some more. Had stuff some changes. Yeah. Maybe that's what yeah. I played. It's very then. convoluted and confusing. Yeah. Yeah. That whole typical franchise. Metal Gear fashion. Yeah, Just exactly. like the end of that game. <laughs> so Alana widening your lead to Oof. nine points for the year. Miranda and Brandon tied at five, and unfortunately that's we couldn't get Tina on the board this time. But you will have other opportunities. You have my Snapple fact though. So. <laughs> that's true. I'm contributing something. Maybe. We'll take that. <laughs> uh, if you. Would like to play along in trivia here. We would love it if you'd send in your Xbox trivia questions. Uh, I'll pick a good one and test these guys. So to do that, send an email to unlocked at IGN.com. Include four multiple choice answers with your question, and please note the correct one in your email, and we'll keep right on playing next week. That brings us to the end of Unlocked, whatever this one was, 345. My goodness. God, we've done two since the Halo one? It uh, feels like that was last week. They're going by quick. Oh, I wasn't here last week. That's why. <laughs> All <laughs> right. <laughs>
Uh, you can find me on Twitter at DMC underscore Ryan. Uh, I'm trying to think project-wise. IGN first for this month. If you're interested in Jurassic World Evolution, we've got coverage of that hitting all month long, including the the first 20 minutes of the game, which is narrated by none other than Jeff Goldblum. Oh, my Rise God. I cannot wait so cool. to watch that. I didn't know that was the piece the, you let off The with. spiritual successor to Operation Genesis, which is what's <laughs> getting a lot of people's interest, in, in, including mine, because you, you, you look at that and go, oh, yeah, whatever, movie cash in, who cares? So it's yeah. like, oh, no, it's it's a park sim, it's it a park management great. sim, and it's by Frontier, the Zoo Tycoon people, so it's it's a good quality developer. So stay tuned for that all month long. Tina. My Twitter handle? Whatever you want to promote. Oh, um, well, yeah, my Twitter handle is Tina Amini, it's super boring, um, and I might review a game soon, but I'm going to be cryptic Ooh. about it because I'm not sure if I will because time is hard. <laughs> it is, especially this time of year, heading oh, into yeah. E3. Yeah, exactly. So it might be a totally disastrous decision that I'm making here, but <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> Alana. Uh, I'm at Charalanazad on all the social media. It's my name in the middle of Charizard. And I'm working on a lot of op-eds right now. We've actually got them planned up until the end of June because I need to pre-plan them for E3 because no one's going to be here. So working on a lot of those right now. Um, but I also wanted to mention for anyone who has VR, I've been playing Beat Saber. Um, I haven't written anything about it, but I do plan to. But it is an incredibly fun, if you guys, even in the office, we should set it up. Um, VR game that's sort of like DDR in that it's uh, a rhythm game yeah. but you play with lightsabers basically you, like, and smash you, you smash them, boxes right? at the right times and like it'll tell you which direction you have to hit them in it's just a lot of fun like definitely it sounds recommend checking it sounds incredibly convoluted uh, it's very easy looking at it it looks hard but when you're actually playing it it's it's easy to follow but then, like, not only do you hit the one on the right, you have to hit it to the right or the left. And they sometimes swap sides. Oh. Sometimes there's obstacles to duck. It's it's really when so you're in the space. So tune in next week when one of us throws up. <laughs> it's very easy. It, yeah, I, I I like it a lot. I have not thrown up, and I do get nice. really bad motion sickness. A, so. a oh, cool. VR game I've been waiting two years for is finally out next week. Yeah. Very excited. Budget cuts. Yeah, you have an budget Oculus cuts wasn't remote. already out. <laughs> Just the demo. Wow. Just the demo, Jeez. which came out alongside the Vive. Wow. Mm. 2016. I love that game. They've been working on it. Yeah, the, the demo is amazing. I love it. I can't wait to play the, the whole That's thing. Exciting. I hope, it's, hope it turns out well. I'm hope sure it, it I hope it wasn't demo just is incredible. Like, yeah, it, it's got to be good. It's got to at least be, there's something that has to be there. Too, too fun. Uh, Brandon, yeah. take us home. Uh, yeah, I'm Brandon Tyrell on Twitter. Very boring as well. Um, just, thanks for watching. All right, well, <laughs> we did it. it. <laughs> All right, uh, I, I leave the show in your hands. Next yeah. week, I will be at a thing next all next week. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So, in, you'll have a good show next week since I won't be yeah. here to drag it down. We'll uh, talk about baseball so much. Yeah, I'll, that'll be the you're whole gonna, show. You're going to watch it on what? Thursday morning. I missed that one? <laughs> so. But I'll be saying things incorrectly the whole time, so you'll be listening to it and just driving yourself slowly <laughs> and saying, it'll be great. <laughs> That uh, would be the that would be an incredible way to troll me. Yeah, like yeah. there's fewer. Yeah, it would. There are not a lot of <laughs> great ways better than that. Can I do that, Dan? Am I allowed to do that? <laughs> what if we just we next week? Thank you. We just rank our our favorite burnout games. That's yeah. Oh, you know we should do that like next week. The last one yeah. and yeah. put Paradise at the top. Yeah, Paradise. That's uh, not a good way. <laughs> what was the other one? Carbon? No, that was Need for Speed. <laughs> yeah. So there might be a Need for Speed game yeah, on the list. Yeah, let's rivals yeah. in there, <laughs> yeah. and it'll be great. Oh my goodness! All right. Alrighty. Uh, we'll see everybody next week. Have fun in the world of Xbox.